of identity uh, mean for you as you're transitioning from high school into university? So we're talking about who are we? Who gets to determine who we are? Is it uh, what we do, what we think? Uh, is it by what we feel, what we're good at? Um, the first thing I want to do is actually, uh, on your sheet, you see 15 boxes. Uh, so try and fill in between five and 10 of these uh, with ways that you would identify yourself, uh, describe yourself, things that are a part of who you are. So for me, I could say I am a student, I am a teacher, I am a daughter, a woman, I am Russian, I am kind, I am a follower of Jesus. Anything that you would kind of use to describe who you are uh, to someone else. Uh, ten things. Go. Part of who you are, they're just not like the most important part of who you are. I only have three. You only have three? Cross that one. <laughs> <laughs> you are not nobody. <laughs> and try and get down to your top like two or three. If you can get down to one, that would be pretty easy. said I was a son of God, a disciple of Christ, and a brother in Christ, so like, in my relation to other people. I picked all the like, I was trying to be a good little, <laughs> <laughs> put all my like, God ones, the top you ones. You got an A plus. <laughs> yeah, that works, Zach, but I had to eliminate, let's see, a, a husband, father, grandfather. Which one of my grandkids am I eliminating? <laughs> But Vera pointed out it's what's most important to you. So it's, you know, my grandkids are important, but they may not be the most, they're not the thing that drives my life. So I didn't have to totally wipe out my wife and <laughs> <laughs> eliminate the policy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually, it's a tricky activity because it's, you know, you're like, well, I don't know. narrowing down these kind of pieces of who we are. Uh, this is actually something that you guys are entering into or kind of already in the middle of. So as you uh, enter um, adolescence, which is like the high school time and the university time, you're actually entering a process called identity formation. Uh, and identity formation is just a fancy way of saying, uh, like you're figuring out what your core identity is. Um, so as we uh, grow up, we, we kind of get a lot of options thrown our way. We try on different identities. You know, one week you're the hipster, next week you figure out you're really good at like soccer and you're like an athlete of the year. Um, maybe you realize, like, I'm going to medical school, so I'm a doctor. Um, there's a lot of different identities we try on. We see like what, what fits, what doesn't, what do we want to keep, what do we uh, want to get rid of. And that's, that's identity formation. And that continues uh, past high school into university. And especially as you transition into first year. So this stage is kind of defined, I, I kind of think of it as like a basket. So you have been raised with a lot of um, values already. A lot of people have spoken into your life about um, how to think, what to believe, your families, your friends, our culture. And so we have this basket and it's full of things. And they're all kind of different sizes, but they're all pretty much uh, the same, right? They're all these options. 
And the process of identity formation is figuring out what's going to be the most important thing. What's going to be like the biggest thing in my basket? I still have all these other things in my basket. Many, there's many parts of who I am, but what is that core piece that kind of helps like direct and identify the rest of the pieces about me? Um, I think the problem is people kind of get stuck here, right? Like uh, we have a lot of options thrown our way, and it's overwhelming. It creates anxiety. So in the past, when it was more like expected that people go certain ways, um, maybe it was a bit easier to like form our identity, but. Now the ball is on our court, right? You decide who you want to be. You decide what you want to do. Um, it's all up to you. You do you, right? Like, and that's a lot of pressure. In, in theory, it's a great idea, but that actually causes like an overwhelming anxiety at times. And so people get stuck. They get stuck in like ah, too many options. I don't know what to do. Okay, I'm just gonna be a bit of everything. And that's not helpful. I think we think it's like, yeah, I, it's so great that I can be like this person here and this person here and this person here. But part of choosing a core identity means consistency. It means being the same person in all the spheres of our lives. Like with our family, with our friends, at work, at school, at church, like everywhere. We, we know who we are and we don't have these like masks that we project uh, to the people around us. And actually when we pick a core identity, we get to move into the next stage of life, which is like adulthood. So that's like a thumbs up. <laughs> um, and it brings with it direction, it brings with it stability. So the overwhelmingness, anxiety, like there's so many options and so many eggs in my basket, I don't know which one to choose kind of like as we figure out that core piece about who we are, uh, it gets alleviated. Uh, and so that's kind of the invitation in identity formation is like you get to figure out who you are. And it's not meant to be scary, it's, it's meant to be something to be aware of, like, ah, okay. So as I go from this stage of life into the next, a lot of things are gonna be thrown at me. So what can I do to kind of like help myself form my identity and not just get stuck in the options? So I, I made like a little small phrase that hopefully you remember. Um, Hashtagable, so you can hashtag it. Um, you're going to repeat after me. Find your filter. Find your filter. Don't be a sponge. Don't be a sponge. So remember that. Um, what kind of filters could you have? Well, one of my, uh, so I, there's like three filters that I'm going to suggest to you guys. Filter number one, ask questions, think critically. So as uh, your baskets get more and more full of things thrown your way, and it's going to probably be like the next four years, like, your basket's going to get this thing, you're like, this is a lot to carry. Um, ask questions about the things that are being thrown at you and being offered to you. Um, questions like, what does this actually mean? Where does it come from? Uh, who, who's telling me this and why are they telling me this? And the best question is like, how is this going to play out now if I make this a part of who I am? And how is it going to play out for years to come? So not just the immediate, but the future. So really like thinking critically, and university is all about thinking critically, you're going to learn that too. Uh, but really, as when it comes to your identity, think critically, ask questions. Number two, filter number two, community. Our community or friends, because they have a strong voice. So pick the people who, uh, around you who are going to help you with this process that you trust. Uh, so community is filter number two. Filter number three, worldview. Uh, so we, we are talking all day about Christian community and what that looks like. Uh, but also, when you're forming your identity, what does God say about who we are and our identity? And how does what he say How's that going to help us form an identity? Yeah, that's what John's So, if we think of a biblical situation, we can think of uh, Jesus. In the, in the book of Mark, it begins with John the Baptist. John the Baptist is doing his thing, and, and, and then enter into the stage is this person named Jesus. Jesus comes, and he's going to be baptized by John. And at that moment, it it's basically says that the heavens opened up. That's very, very soft. The heavens are torn apart, the word is used. It's the same Greek word that's used when the tur curtain is torn. It's only used twice in the New Testament. Same word. Torn apart. God is entering dramatically into the scene. And he speaks to Jesus. And this is what he says. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Pretty profound. Very next verse, Jesus goes off into the desert. He's tempted by Satan. Verse after that, he begins his ministry to preach the gospel. And he selects his disciples, and he's going around and preaching. And you know Mark, it just, it just moves really, really quickly along. This is significant. If we flash forward to the end of Jesus' ministry in the book of John, we see in John 13, it says, 
Jesus knew where he'd come from and where he was going, so what did he do? He got up from the table, uh, grabbed the towel, and washed his disciples' feet. John 13, 34, and 35, he basically says to his disciples, Hey guys, um, guess what I've done for you? You know, it's a new commandment I get to you, that you love one another. By this all men will know that you're my disciples, if you have love for one another. So he's basically calling them out to be the kind of servant love, love, give the kind of servant love that he had just demonstrated. If you're going to be a leader, you're going to serve. If you're going to lead, you're going to be a leader, you're going to love. Where does that come from? Well, if we go back to the beginning of the chapter, Jesus knew where he'd come from, knew where he was going. He knew his identity, he knew his purpose. He knew exactly who he was. Where did that come from? I'm convinced it comes back to God's voice to him, his father's voice to him at baptism. You are my son. With you, I, I love you. And I'm pleased with you. With you, I'm well pleased. Well, we might think that only applies to Jesus, but honestly, we are all children of God. If we believe in Jesus Christ, we are God's children. We are his sons and daughters, truly. And that, and we're brothers and sisters with one another, right? That means you can have the same thing said to you. Aaron, you are my daughter. God says to you, I love you. And I'm so pleased with you. Let me tell you how it applied to me. In my 40s, uh, somewhere back then in the dark ages, uh, way, way, way back then, um, I was struggling in ministry because I was the Ontario campus director overseeing all of the campuses. I was leading the campus ministry to master, and certain leadership things were being formed and changed. And I felt at that point I needed to step down from my role. I thought it was the right thing to do. So I stepped down from my role. Well, it created a real crisis for me because I suddenly recognized that my identity was wrapped up in what I did. I was a navigator staff. I was a campus rep. I was an Ontario director. That was gone, and I really struggled. I didn't handle it well. And it was this passage, through the teaching of uh, uh, Henry Dowden, I am the beloved. You will see his uh, link in, in later on in the day that we're going to forward to you. That where he talks through that we're not what we do. We're not what we have. And we're not what people think of us. We are God's children. And he loves us. And I began to hear God's voice to me. Don, you're my son. I really love you. And when I think of you, Don, when you get up in the morning, I have a big smile on my face. I'm a typical thing. I think you're the greatest. I began to play that recording in my brain day in, day out. Well, what does that do? It means you become secure in your core identity. And when you lose something, something that you value, maybe a, a, a role or a relationship or something, you can settle on that. And you're not as worried. And I'm at the stage in life where I was talking to one of the parents, uh, one of your parents, earlier. It's interesting. I just feel so free. I really don't care what people think of me. I mean, there's a very freeing thing about that. I just will do what God wants me to do. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. But it's something that we can do. So we're going to turn to these questions. That, oh, I just want to end this as you project forward, as you go into residence. What would it be like if you enter into that residence and you're so secure in your identity in Christ that when that uh, girl comes to you and says, you know, my boyfriend just dumped me. Uh, what am I going to do? And you can slide right beside her and say, it's okay. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. You're thinking others. Uh, or, you know, somebody just got wasted the night before, totally blitzed, totally drunk. And they don't, and they've never really drunk before, and they what have I done? You come along, you don't have the big judgmental finger, you have that big black Bible just pointed out, and you say, I'm here for you. I'm with you. Let me journey with you in this. Because you're secure in your identity in Christ. Or if they make fun of you or something like that. You can just you learn the game, you learn how to laugh, and you just say, Yeah, you know. And uh, you're able to just let it roll off if you're not worried about it. So think about that. You've got some questions. Yeah. Vera's going to guide us on these questions. We're going to work on them together.
And then too, just to go off what you're saying, Don, like Jesus was in a huge transition. Yes. Point. Like he found himself leaving one stage of life, entering this new stage of life. And before he did anything, God said, I already love you. I'm already well pleased with you. So before you go into university, before you accomplish anything, get your degrees, uh, before you know you lead or make a good impression with, on your floor, like before all of that, you, God's already pleased with you. God Excellent. already loves you. So you're like Jesus. <laughs> you're in a transition. And the gift that God gives in the middle of that transition is that I love you and I'm pleased with you. Hold on to that as you move. Uh, from one stage of life into the next. Uh, so some of the questions um, are, what are the different identities you see your friends choosing? Why do they choose them? Uh, what are the ways you identify yourself and why? What are the challenges you think you're going to experience as a first year student next year? And kind of what Don was saying, like, if we really knew that we were loved by God and he was already pleased with us, how would those challenges play out? Uh, and lastly, what is exciting about identifying with Jesus as you head into this new place? Uh, and also, what scares you about being identified with Jesus in this new place? So turn it to groups of three or four. You don't have to answer all the questions. Answer the ones that kind of stick out, or you can just talk about some of the things that you've heard. Um, yeah, and then we'll wrap up. So groups of three or four. Go. Five. Five. Uh, Absolutely. So what uh, what stood out to you? What are a couple of things that, as we talked about that in those questions, what were a few items that just percolated to the surface? Yeah. We talked a bit about how, depending on where you are, you might identify yourself as different things. Mm -hmm. So people will change their identity based on the role that they feel they have in a given context. Mm -hmm. And the more consistent you are at your core identity, the better. So I, I hear you. But it's... Uh, mm -hmm. If I'm a total jerk on the soccer field, which I have to admit has probably happened from time to time in the past, hopefully won't happen in the future, um, you know, that's maybe not a good thing. If I lose my my love and compassion for the fellow soccer field. <laughs> so, um, Jeff, November, what happened to you? Remember our conversation in this area of identity? This is nice. This, this, past, this past November. Oh, um, after your operation? Yeah, so I had two hip operations after my second season of Marvel. Um, so I had it in October of this year, so still something I'm working through. And we'll all work through. But uh, I have really struggled this year with, with not being able to play the sport I've always played and kind of sitting on the sidelines and watching. Really hard for me. And the point I think you brought up is going in, you probably thought, eh, my identity is in Christ and I'm good. But it's not until you lost it yeah. and it was gone that you came to me and said, hey, gone, this is, uh, I'm really feeling this. Yeah. And so sometimes you can think theoretically, oh, well, that, uh, you know, um, you know, Zach I could never do parkour again. Be hard. That would be hard, eh? I'd cry a lot. You'd yeah. cry a lot. But and that's what that's why that exercise is not bad. I had soccer on there, and so if I lost my soccer, well, I lose my soccer. I mean I had a stage now, I've had a good I've had a good innings. So the it doesn't change. I was telling the last group too, just before you go. I work with medical students at McMaster in a, an organization called Christian Medical and Dental Society. If some of you are going to come to McMaster in medicine, you'll find me uh, in a few years. But the number one thing I work with them is on this area of identity. Because mm -hmm. they come in and right away, if they're getting bombarded with their identity, oh, doctor, going to be a doctor, oh, I've got to go, yeah. and I've got to be good, so I've got to take in this, and I've got to go to this elective, and I've got to go and watch this operation, and 10 operations, don't have time for Bible study, I don't have time, and a lot of them lose their way because they get absorbed in this identity called medical student. And you can't do it. So you've got to establish that core identity. So on that note, we're going to end, and we're I'm going to pray.